Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and welcome back. Happy New Year uh, to you, Mr. Speaker, and to all members of the House. Uh, pleasure to take a call in uh, this debate on the Prime Minister's statement. Uh, firstly, can I just acknowledge uh, the Right Honourable John Key uh, for the leadership uh, that he has shown, not only this place, but New Zealand, through some very, very uh, difficult and challenging times, and his unflappable, uh, positive and aspirational uh, approach. Uh, well, that member, um, of course, will tune out entirely to this because it doesn't make sense to members on the other side of the House, this sort of language, uh, and I'll come back to that. But can I just acknowledge the Prime Minister for his leadership and acknowledge uh, the Cabinet of this Government, uh, Mr Speaker, a very disciplined Cabinet. And uh, while I'm at that, I would like to acknowledge uh, the Honourable Kate Wilkinson and uh, Phil Heatley for the fantastic contribution they have made to this country over the past four years and congratulate the new Ministers, uh, Michael Woodhouse and Nikki Kay, for uh, their worthy promotions and the contribution they will make uh, to this uh, caucus and this country and also Mr Bridges, uh, the Honourable Simon Bridges, uh, for his uh, entry into Cabinet, and uh, Mr Mackendo, uh, Tim Mackendo, uh, terrific gentleman, uh, who will take up the role of Junior Whip, uh, as uh, uh, Louise Upston has now taken on the role of Senior Whip, and of course uh, Mr Whippet, uh, our Junior Whip, Jamie Lee Ross, a man who commands a lot of respect across our caucus, and I welcome uh, him to that role and, and wish him all the best in that. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, I really want to focus on what uh, I believe sets uh, this caucus apart from other parties in this House, and that, uh, to me, fundamentally... Uh, no, it's not the same old material, uh, Mr Clark, it's not the same old material. It's discipline and belief, uh, sir. It's discipline and belief, I believe, fundamentally, is what sets this caucus apart. A disciplined caucus... Uh, in a great part because of the leadership of our Prime Minister, because of the personalities of the people on this side of the House. But in the main, uh, sir, I believe it's because we on this side of the House know just what sort of focus and what sort of discipline this country needs in these very challenging times. Since uh, the Labour Party were in government, uh, we have seen some unprecedented economic challenges, both with the Canterbury earthquakes, uh, which shaved more than 10 per cent off GDP, devastated our second biggest city uh, and is something that has brought many challenges for those involved in this entire nation and a global financial crisis unparalleled since the Great Depression. Uh, and this requires nothing but absolute discipline, sir, uh, to overcome. And that is the main focus within this caucus, is the discipline to ride out these tough times. I believe that sets us apart from an opposition who don't want to acknowledge those two significant events, sir, unless it serves their political point-scoring uh, efforts. And that, to me, uh, says a lot about uh, the focus of that particular uh, uh, Labour Party and their friends uh, across the opposition benches. I don't need to speak, uh, uh, sir, about the ill-discipline that we've seen from the Labour caucus. I think the whole country has seen that played out uh, at the recent conference, uh, nonetheless, and no doubt over the next week or so. Uh, and I don't want to dwell on that uh, other than to say, whatever is going on there, sir, their focus is inward. Whereas on this side of the House, our focus is outward. And it's outward on Kiwis who need a government to responsibly manage finances. That need a government... I'll come to that. I'll come to that. That need a government to deliver better public services, uh, Mr Speaker, after they become... Uh, bloated and ineffective in many ways. A big government is not necessarily better government. Uh, sir, building a more productive and competitive economy and rebuilding Christchurch. Those four priorities, those four priorities are nothing new to this House and we uh, reiterate, we repeat, we talk about them day in and day out. Day out. Why? Because that is our focus, that is our discipline and New Zealanders expect and want that. And we're absolutely focused on delivering those things. Uh, for uh, New Zealanders, and that takes discipline. That takes discipline. The other important uh, difference, I believe, is belief. Sir, belief uh, in New Zealanders, led again by this Prime Minister, who has an unflappable belief uh, in the Kiwi spirit uh, and the, the, the fact that we will get on and do what is required uh, in these tough times as a nation. Uh, Mr Speaker, 
Some of the founding values of this National Party are rewarding hard work and enterprise, freedom of choice and personal responsibility. These are fun, uh, founding values of our party and I think resonate uh, through the core of the policies and the priorities uh, that uh, we see uh, in this government, in our busy schedule uh, and in those four priorities I've mentioned. Mr Speaker, our policies fundamentally demonstrate a belief in our fellow Kiwis and in their abilities, uh, their desire and motivation to succeed and overcome the challenges that they face individually and we face collectively and their willingness to work hard and a belief that they should be rewarded for that work, Mr Speaker. If we take, uh, if we take a look at the work again from the other side of the House, we hear exactly what I'm speaking about, Mr Speaker, and that is a total lack of belief in Kiwis. Even, even in the interjections, they demonstrate their total lack of belief. Mr Speaker, yeah, worst line in 50 years, Mr Clark. Work, uh, work and welfare, uh, Mr Speaker, that is going on as a member of the Social Services Select Committee, I'm very pl uh, proud of what the Minister and what our Chair, uh, Sam Lotawinga, and members of that committee are achieving. And I think it epitomises what, the, what we're trying to do for Kiwis in very tough times. $22 million a day, our welfare bill. And while that's a, a, a travesty in financial cost, the human capital, the human cost is immense. And something that has played out, I think, in so many ways in the last 20 or 30 years. And we're addressing that. And we're taking an investment approach in solving that problem, Mr Speaker. We are getting around, in particular, young people who without the support, are staring straight down the barrel of a life uh, or a long time on an adult benefit. We're getting around those people and providing them with skills, support, incentives, and backing them and backing their belief that they have a dream that they can achieve. And that takes a different approach other than throwing them a bit of money and keeping them beholden, something that the Labor Party have become so accustomed over the years, Mr Speaker. That is about belief. We also see it when we look at employment, what we see in the 90-day trial period, what we see in the youth start-up uh, wage, Mr Speaker, what we see in the tax reforms and the small businesses that are the heart and soul of this country and the way in which we have tried to bring small business uh, in New Zealand, young people that want a chance together because that is about backing young people and it's about backing businesses to get on and do what they can do and only they can do. We've just got to make it happen, uh, put the conditions in place for them to do that. And that, Mr Speaker, fundamentally is about believing uh, in them, and that's where wage growth comes from. Not from members of the House that want to legislate minimum wages. If we could do that, why not make it $100 an hour? In fact, why stop there? That's not what it's about. In every aspect of uh, delivering uh, our four priorities, Mr Speaker, there is belief. There is belief in people. There is belief in the Kiwi spirit. And I think there is belief in the brighter future that this country is heading towards under this leadership. Uh, Mr Speaker, it's a great time to be in opposition and deep in their hearts. Those people on that side of the House know that because they can sit there and throw all the sort of comments around they like, knowing full well that we've just got to deal, we've just got to deal with those challenging times. And the belief in New Zealanders and the discipline that we're showing is what is delivering for us on that score. And the noise that's coming from the other side demonstrates that in my belief. What we don't see in the opposition parties uh, is, the, is, the belit is the ability uh, to turn uh, that discipline and that focus into what is right for New Zealanders instead of what is right for them in their inward focus. Mr Speaker, they talk about wanting to be a hands-on government. Well, we know what that is. Remember, remember about the, uh, the, the, the shower heads, Mr Speaker? Yeah, hands in our pockets. Hands in our pockets. It's about more bureaucracy, more tax. It's about more cost. It's about less belief, Mr Speaker. This government has adjusted to what Kiwis need in these tough times. That's what's making the difference. We believe in, the, in Kiwis. We are disciplined, and that is what they are not, and that is why they are there, and long may that be the case. Esanati Loli Taylor. Well, man.